Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my Economics Plus. I am Dr. Pradeep Chakravarti. <coughs> uh, today I am going to uh, take class on uh, the first chapter of macroeconomics that is uh, to introduce macroeconomics to you all. Uh, as we know, economics is uh, broadly having two branches that is uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics you have studied in uh, class 11, my, which is uh, the study of individual and isolated economic units. On the other hand, macroeconomics is the study of the economic system as a whole. Now, microeconomics is the study of an uh, isolated and individual economic unit. It may be a farm, it may be one uh, consumer, it may be a particular economic unit, whatever it may be. It may be a buyer, a seller. But single unit. Macroeconomics on the other hand is the whole set, the total set, that is the totality. Macroeconomics is the study of economic system as a whole, that is it is the study of aggregates. For example, national income. National income we are talking about the, econo the income of the economy as a whole. Poverty. Poverty is not about only one individual, it is about the whole uh, country. Then again we are having uh, uh, inflation. Inflation is also one of the macroeconomic problems because, and where we are talking about the general increase in price level. Inflation means a rapid and continuous increase in general price level. That is for inflation and here also we are talking about the macroeconomics as a whole, the economic system as a whole. Next topic what we are going to explain here is uh, this is actually the difference, the differences between the differences between microeconomics and macroeconomics. <clears throat> so, first point of difference is that uh, microeconomics is a study of individual economic unit. Microeconomics is a study of an individual and isolated economic unit. Completely one unit only. I'm just giving you one example. Suppose in our country so many students are there, but if I'm talking about one student, that is micro, and all students in the country as a whole, that is macro. Another example in a forest, one tree is micro, and all the trees in the forest are macro. So macroeconomics studies the economic system as a whole. Next one, uh, point number two is that Price determination and allocation of resources. Price determination and allocation of resources is the primary uh, function of microeconomics. Whereas national income and uh, determination of employment is uh, the primary function of uh, macroeconomics. Here in microeconomics, price determination, price determination mainly uh, focuses on the factor prices, the price of all the factors that is land, labor, capital, entrepreneur and product prices, the price of final goods and services that are being produced in our country. Then you will see uh, national income and employment. Macroeconomics is dealing with how to determine, how to calculate, how to estimate national income, how to increase national income, what are the different methods and all these things. And uh, employment, how to increase, how to generate employment. In fact, if we can increase employment, our national income will also increase because employment means more output, more output means more national income. Next point of difference is that in microeconomics, the tools are demand and supply simply. The most important two tools, demand and supply. And here in macroeconomics, two tools are aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Aggregate means total demand. Aggregate demand means total demand in the economy. Aggregate supply means total supply in the economy. So these are the components. Next point is both microeconomics and macroeconomics are having some central problems. Some central problems are there both in microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics also have central problems. Macroeconomics also have central problems. Microeconomic problems you have both in class 11. First microeconomic problem is what to produce. In fact, it is what and how much to produce. That is the microeconomic problem. In short, what to produce means it is the problem in front. Of, it is the problem in front of a country 
the economy to decide uh, which commodities are to be produced. Say for example, whether to produce wheat or to produce rice in our country. So automatically the economy government or the economy will decide you know, whether to produce this. But since in our country both are required, so then the government will have to decide how much of wheat and how much of rice is to be produced. Next one is how to produce. These uh, commodities are to be produced by labor intensive technique or by using capital intensive technique. That is by using more labor, less capital or by using more uh, capital and less labor. Here capital means you can say machines. So in our country, since labor is uh, available and uh, we are getting it at a cheaper rate, we are going for labor intensive technique. But in developed countries, they are going for uh, capital intensive techniques because capital is uh, cheaper and available there. This is coming under how to produce and for whom to produce. For whom to produce, it's uh, talking about allocation of resources in fact, now allocation of resources, uh, it may be, uh, it's talking about the distribution actually. That is personal distribution and functional distribution. So whatever final goods and services have been produced will have to be this. Personal distribution uh, means whether the goods will have to be produced for uh, the rich class or the poor class or the middle class. Personal distribution. Functional distribution means uh, whether the goods, the what percentage of total GDP will be going to labor, how much, per, what percentage will be the share of uh, land, what percentage will be the share of capital, and how much will be going to the entrepreneur. So this is talking, uh, this is coming under central problems of macroeconomics, that is for whom to produce. And in this side, central macroeconomic problems, you will see uh, three central macroeconomic problems. First one is to promote economic growth or how to promote economic growth and here in short economic growth means how to produce more goods and services economic growth in uh, our country while uh, government is making plan every year now pl uh, planning commission is also not there no five year plan but still every year government is setting a target say 8% growth rate that means our GDP will have to be increased by 8% or 10% like that. So that is how to increase that GDP that becomes a problem. So that is to promote economic growth. Next one is to control inflation. Inflation means uh, a rapid and continuous increase in general price level. A rapid and continuous increase in general price level is called inflation. And inflation affects almost all people in the economy except the entrepreneurs. Or the business plan. And it uh, badly affects the fixed income and salaried people. Now, how it is affected? Because the income of salaried and salaried people and fixed income groups remains constant. On the other hand, price level is going up. So as a result, these people find it difficult to purchase the same bundle of commodities what they were purchasing before inflation. Because suppose by spending thousand rupees a person was a person was purchasing. Uh, 50 kg rice or uh, 1000 rupees 50 kg is impossible 1000 rupees he was purchasing um, uh, 20 kg rice the price of which was uh, 50 rupees so he was purchasing 20 now the same uh, the price of the uh, that uh, same rice has increased to 60 rupees so automatically he will not be able to purchase the same amount of rice after inflation so he will suffer like this all fixed income group will be Suffering and it becomes the responsibility of the government to protect these people and to curb inflation. Otherwise, the credibility of government will be lost. To check unemployment. How to curb unemployment? Unemployment is a very dangerous situation uh, in our country. Many people are now who are unemployed or how can we define unemployed people? So the definition is like that. Any person... Uh, in the age group of 14 to 60 years, willing and able to work, but not getting a job, he is unemployed. And that is a very dangerous situation and government will have to solve this problem to check unemployment. And how to check unemployment? By providing employment. That is the solution. Now, if someone is unemployed, what is the problem? There are two types of problems. Unemployed person is a burden on his family because 
all his expenditure will have to be bear by the family members and as a result the savings of that family member is being affected on the other hand he it is a loss the unemployed person is a loss to the society also to the economy also because he is not contributing to the economy his contribution is zero in the economy because he is qualified or he is having that skill but since he is not working he is not producing anything so his contribution to the society is zero and finally we will get the last point equilibrium of an economic unit microeconomics deals with the equilibrium of one individual economic unit macroeconomics on the other hand deals with the equilibrium of the economy as a whole so these are the differences between microeconomics and macroeconomics next i am going to explain uh, scope of macroeconomics so what are the scope of macroeconomics you see any economic event that affects the economy as a whole comes under the scope of macroeconomics that means anything what is affecting the totality the economy as a whole will come under macroeconomics and accordingly there are four categories four groups are there which are coming under the scope of macroeconomics first one is theory of national income all the theories estimation of national income then uh, how to promote uh, increase the national income everything will be coming here the theories of national income theory of employment there are different theories the classical theory of employment keynesian theory of employment different theories of employment how to generate employment in a, in the economy all these will come here theory of money money means actually uh, we call money is sweeter than honey why so because you can by using money uh, you can purchase uh, all the, you can purchase honey as well as all the other sweets so money is sweeter than honey we call it like this anyway so theory of money theory of money it includes the uh, the theory that regulates that talks about the supply of money how much should be the supply of money in the economy that is we can say quantity theory of money and all so monetary policies the uh, how to regulate the supply of money how to regulate credit supply in the economy all these things will be coming under here that is theory of money and theory of growth as we already have discussed here the problem of economic growth here you see so this one theory of economic growth how to promote economic growth how to produce more goods and services that will come under the scope of macroeconomics and uh, again the central problems central macroeconomic problems i already have discussed here this may also be uh, discussed separately so next i am going to explain what is a business cycle and what are the different phases of business cycle and i will also include uh, what is final good what is uh, consumption good intermediate good different types of goods i'll be including in that 